Welcome back. The Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif accuses Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of lying about Iran's nuclear ambitions by dismissing Tehran's statements as charm offensive. Speaking on an Iranian TV, Zarif says Netanyahu's lies and actions are meant to deceive and scare people, and the international public opinion will not let these lies go unanswered. Zarif was speaking from the United Nations, where Netanyahu was set to address the General Assembly later today. The U.S. government has partially shut down for the first time in 17 years after Congress failed to agree on measures to continue funding basic services. Federal agencies were ordered to begin closing at midnight on Tuesday, that is today, meaning 800,000 non-essential workers will be forced to stay at home. The shutdown began after the law to fund government ran out as the Republican-led House of Representatives attempted to draw up a replacement that blocks parts of President Barack Obama's signature health care law. The House has passed two spending bills in recent days, both of which have been rejected by the Democratic-led Senate. The House asked for a conference on the budget with the Senate. However, the Senate's Democratic Majority Leader, H Harry Reid, said it would reject the proposal and called on the House to pass a budget law not to link to health care. Unfortunately, Congress has not fulfilled its responsibility. It's failed to pass a budget. And as a result, much of our government must now shut down until Congress funds it again. Secretary Hagel, General Dempsey, and your commanders will have more information about how this affects you and your families. Today I want to speak directly to you about what happens next. Those of you in uniform will remain on your normal duty status. The threats to our national security have not changed, and we need you to be ready for any contingency. Ongoing military operations, like our efforts in Afghanistan, will continue. If you're serving in harm's way, we're going to make sure you have what you need to succeed in your missions. Congress has passed, and I'm signing into law, legislation to make sure you get your paychecks on time. And we'll continue working to address any impact this shutdown has on you and your families. The Venezuelan government has released video it says has proved that U.S. Embassy employees have met with opposition and labor leaders to sabotage Venezuela's economy and power grid. President Nicolas Maduro announced the expulsion of the three American officials earlier in the day. The video shows Charge d'Affaires Kelly Kieterling, the top embassy official in the absence of an ambassador, consular officer David Mu, and Elizabeth Hoffman, who works in the embassy's political section. Foreign Minister Elias Hawa accused the U.S. officials of trying to disrupt the operations of SIDOR, a state-owned steel company, as well as other businesses in Guyana, and generate chaos among the people. The U.S. Embassy denied such accusations and says it has not received official notification from the Foreign Ministry of the Expulsations. Typhoon Multip has left a trail of destruction in its wake, with at least three people reported dead in Vietnam. Roofs ripped off thousands of homes as packing winds of up to 103 kilometers an hour hit the country. Dozens of fishermen are missing, roads were flooded, and power lines are torn up along the central coastline, including a top tourist attraction such as the World Heritage Site of, site of Hoi An and an ancient capital of Hue. Authorities warn there could be more rain coming. And on that note, we end our bulletin for today. Now let me remind you of our headlines. Angry residents blocked the main highway linking Tripoli with Akka, blaming the government over last week's boat tragedy in Indonesia. Chemical arsenal disarmament work is due to start in Syria a day after UN inspectors finished their investigation of alleged gas attacks. And finally, the US government partially shuts down for the first time in 17 years as Congress fails to agree on measures to continue funding basic services. That's it for me and the news team here at Future Television. I'm Linda Tamim and I'll be back again tomorrow with more updates. Take care till then.